Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the channel. And in today's video, we're going to be doing the first service on my 2023 Triumph Tiger 900 GT. That will include the oil change, the cleaning of the chain, also check the tension, and uh, reset the service light, which is probably the most important thing. If you have a Tiger and you do your own oil change or you're interested in getting a Tiger or most modern Triumphs now, the reset service light has to be done at the dealer. You can't do it yourself. But in this video, we will show you how you can do it by yourself with just a little bit of money. And uh, it's pretty easy to do. So stay tuned as we go through the oil change. Well, there it is on my commute home. I just hit the 600 mile mark and the service light just popped on. And now it is time to do the oil. So you can see here underneath, you got the skid plate or belly pan, whatever you want to call it. And you do have access to the drain plug right there. And in the manual, they do call for removing the belly pan. I guess you really don't have to, but it probably makes it easier if you do just to access those, those parts as well as getting to the filter. So we're going to remove it anyway. And to remove the belly pan, it's easy. You have four bolts. They're five millimeter, all of them. The two on the left side are a different size than the two on the right. So just make sure to kind of put them together so you don't uh, mix them up. They are different lengths, but it's five millimeters. You got um, two underneath the belly and then you have two on the left side on the, the side of the pan. Now to remove the drain plug, you're just going to use an eight millimeter uh, Allen key. You can use a ratchet. I've got a, a key here because I don't have a, a ratchet. But it comes out pretty easily. You don't need too much force to, to get it cracked open the first time. And make sure when you take it off, you do not lose the O-ring. Sometimes it sticks underneath and you don't see it. And then it'll pop out with the oil and be in your oil pan with uh, mixed in with all the oil. Or it comes out with the plug itself. So they say you can change or you should change the crush washer each time. I usually don't, at least not the first couple times unless it's in bad shape. But this crush washer is fine. I usually reuse them. Um, knock on wood, I usually don't have any issues. So you do what you want to do. I'm going to keep the same crush washer. Now, after it's done draining, you could put the plug back in. Make sure to put the, the washer in. Don't forget that. Either new or used. Like I said, that's on you. I'm using the old one here. And once it's in, it does get torqued down to 18 foot-pounds or 25 newton meters. Now, I don't have... I do have a torque wrench, but I don't have the, the bits for it. So I'm just using the Allen key that I'm using. And I'm just going to make it, you know, pretty tight as, as much as I feel is around, you know, 18 foot-pounds, I'm, I'm guessing. And I'm just going to make sure it doesn't leak once I, I refill it with oil. But if you do have a set that you can hook up to a torque wrench, that's uh, even better. You could get the exact torque. Now, for the oil filter part, I like to use tin foil. I did this when I had a Trident 660 as well because they put the oil filter right over the exhaust. And if you just unscrew it, all that oil is going to drip, on, drip onto your exhaust. So I just put tin foil down and I just kind of direct it towards the pan. Here I'm using an oil filter wrench. You can use uh, Trident has the, the tool for getting the filter off. I'm using an oil wrench for a car and this worked. And I just kind of, first time they do it, they always put it on super tight and I'm just using this and it comes right off and then I could spin off the rest by hand. And as you can see, once the oil filter spins off, the, the oil drips down nice and neat, down the tin foil into the catch pan, doesn't get on the exhaust or anything else. Uh, once you take the oil filter off, you want to make sure that that gasket comes off with it. It doesn't stick to the engine side, uh, that it stays on the oil, uh, the oil filter side. And if it does stick to the engine, just peel it off. You don't want to put double gasket on because then it will leak. Um, you take your new oil filter. I'm going to put all parts will be in the video description down below, all links to the parts I used. So if you have the bike and you want easy access to the parts, it'll be there. Make sure you just put a little oil, fresh oil on the filter uh, to lube up that gasket. And then you're just going to spin it on. And they do have torques for it, uh, a torque specs for it. It's 10 newton meters or uh, 89 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. With oil filters, I never use the torque specs. I always just spin it on till it's tight and then do about a quarter turn, half tight, and I've never had a problem. I always think they put them on way too tight. I think half turn, quarter turn is more than enough. But like I said, you do you if you want to do the torque specs. Right, next up, we're going to put the oil in. This will just breeze through. Everyone knows how to do this. You put a funnel in, pour the oil in. This bike does take 3.15 liters with an oil and filter change. I usually start with three liters and then I'll kind of start the bike, maybe do a quick ride and then check the level again, let it you know sit for a little bit. You check it when the engine's warm. You also check it with the bike standing straight up, not on the jiffy stand. But I usually do three liters to start and then I'll adjust a little more if needed. If you took the belly pan off, uh, you wanna make sure to start the bike before putting the pan back on, check for any leaks. Uh, so here we started the bike, checked underneath. I got no leaks there by the plug. I've got no leaks um, by the oil filter itself. And then of course I wanna give the bike uh, a ride later in and check for leaks again. But so far, no leaks. 
so we could put the uh, skid plate back on. Installing the pan is the exact reverse order of when you took it off. You're just going to hold it up, line up the holes, and you're going to put the two in on the left side or two in the bottom. It really doesn't matter which side. But like I said, make sure you put in the right screws because the left side is different than the right. So when you take them off, keep them separated so you know which is which. And like I said, just line up the screws and put it back on. Now these fasteners, they're five millimeter and they do get torqued down to 53 inch pounds, not foot pounds, or six newton meters. And now that's that's done, let's move on to the service light reset. On the OBD2, I got my OBD link. All links are in the description down below. For this exact setup. Plug it in. Turn the ignition on. In the on position, we got a little service light. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to Bluetooth here. Right, put it back. I'm going to connect. So now we're connected. We got little blinky blinkies. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go into ECU, tests and adjustments. I'm going to go to adjustments, reset service interval. Reset service interval, run. I'm going to go miles, 6,000 miles, it's the most you could do. I'm going to do set. Thursday, September 14th, 2023. That's the uh, September 14th, 2023. That's a year from today. Confirm next service at 6,000 miles or September 14th, 2023. Yes. Reset service interval. Done. And. It will disconnect ECU. Come out of here. And voila! The wrench is gone. And if we go into the next service, it's September 23rd, uh, September 2023, a year from today, or 6,000 miles. So, kind of don't get everything else all mucked up. I'm just gonna spray this guy with some kerosene. Motul chain paste. This comes right out. So listen, we're actually going to skip over the chain tensioning part because I did this after work, after working a full day and after changing the oil and cleaning the chain and doing the service light, I was just tired, I was hungry, wanted to go inside, get something to eat. I actually checked the chain tension the next day, um, I used the ruler, I'm actually just under 30 millimeters, probably about like 27 uh, millimeters. I used a ruler. The specs are anywhere between 20 and 30 millimeters as far as the, the slack between the chain. I checked mine. It's a little on the high side, but it's still within spec. Like I said, it's about 27 millimeters. So I'm not even gonna bother adjusting it because it is still within spec, but I'll probably run another 400, 500 miles and check it again. And if it needs to be adjusted, then adjust it. But right now I'm still within spec, so we're gonna leave it. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the video. Like I said, all description, all links will be in the video description down below for all the products that I've used in this. Um, hopefully if it helped out, if it did, hit like, hit subscribe, really appreciate it. And uh, leave any questions, comments down below. I read everything, I comment on everything. So if you have any questions, comments, tips, whatever, leave them down below and uh, hopefully see you there. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the channel. Have a great one. Later.